Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for day two of the virtual almond conference. You are in the session for the Harvest Work Group. I am Brian Walbrink, chairman of the Harvest Work Group, grower and co-owner of Sperry Farms, and current vice chairman of the Almond Board. In this session, we are focused on highlighting the year of progress made by my favorite part of the growing season, the harvest. It's no secret we've had unprecedented challenges as almond growers this year with COVID and especially the devastating fires that put us in unusual circumstances into play during this year's harvest. But we got through it and persevered as almond growers do, and now we have the off season to plan and innovate again. Here is the agenda we will be covering today. You just saw we had the opening remarks from me. We go next to the journey towards dust reduction and off-ground harvest by Sebastian. Then we roll into reducing barriers of adoption, drying almonds by Guangwei. And then we're finishing uh, with a really cool dust reduction video uh, that is just being rolled out for today's presentation and will be on the website afterwards. So I wanted to outline the Almond Orchard 2025 goals set out by the Board of Directors starting in 2018. The four goals are reduce the amount of water used to grow a pound of almonds by an additional 20%, achieve zero waste in our orchards by putting everything we grow to optimal use, increase adoption of environmentally friendly pest management tools by 25%, and there's my favorite, reduce dust during harvest by 50%. The past two years in this work group has really been a great experience as the Almond Board has provided the arena for innovation and change while discussing the harvest. It's important to know that off-ground harvest is more than just a shake and catch system. There's a lot of new ideas and innovations coming out, but it's any system that eliminates the almonds to contact with the orchard floor. So there are a variety of tarp ideas. You can shake, redirect, lay them down to dry on tarps. Uh, we're identifying different things that are holding us back uh, from going to a full off-ground harvest. But in this series today, we're looking at the drying, which is another key component. And then, uh, like we said before, Sebastian's going to show us the evolution and the journey that we've been on uh, when we're really talking about air quality. Lastly, I would like to thank our amazing work group that keeps the ideas coming. We have all the major manufacturers represented here and everybody's very committed to working towards a low dust arena and just pushing the innovation. And it, I've so enjoyed working with all of you for the betterment of the almond industry. And now we will go to Sebastian for the journey towards dust reduction and off ground harvest. Well, Thanks, Brian, for that introduction. And uh, today I would like to talk about the journey towards dust reduction and off-ground harvest. And by way of introduction, I would like to mention that ABC sponsored researching harvest dust started in the 2000s and continues to really play a key role in moving our industry forward. You can see this roadmap here in this slide uh, that after years of research, in collaboration with top researchers from Texas A&M, we were able to generate sufficient data to roll out the first incentive program for our growers in 2015. This incentive program is sponsored by NRCS and has a threshold of 30% reduction in particle matter 10 emissions compared to the Flurry 480 equipment. And the payment is $38.93 per acre. Then the years of research were also fundamental to develop our current harvest best management practice package, which we launched in 2016, as you can see there in, in the second box of the slice. This package provides technical information on how to best adapt harvest practice and equipment to local orchard conditions. In fact, our resources nowadays include managing dust at harvest technical guide, a toolkit, an educational video, uh, actually many educational videos in English and Spanish, and we envision to further develop outreach tactics in the years to come. As our research work continued during the last five years, we were also able to collect sufficient information in coordination with the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District for a new type of dust incentives. This new incentive has a threshold 
of 40% reduction in PM 2.5 emissions compared to the Flory 480 equipment and, and a payment of 50% of new equipment. And also in 2018, the board of directors identified a dust reduction by 50% during harvest as a key strategic goal for our industry. And so we decided to formally establish, formally establish our harvest work group. Since then, we have developed a strategic research plan under the umbrella of off-ground harvest as a solution to reduce dust and beyond. We have different projects going on in this area, and we have already started to see a certain level of adoption of off-ground practices, such as catch and reallocate to the middle of the road, also how we call these days a semi-off-ground harvest approach. We have developed uh, this is a strategic research plan under this umbrella of off-ground harvest as a solution to reduce dust and beyond dust because under the direction of the board of directors and the strategic ag innovation committee and ultimately at the work group level we also off-ground harvest as a strategic opportunity that was worth exploring we found in off-ground harvest an opportunity that we think can go beyond dust reduction and that could help us to mitigate many other challenges while at the same time bringing new opportunities to our industry. Specifically, we think that off-ground harvest could not only reduce dust, but also reduce the amount of pesticides of herbicide use, for instance, um, the less herbicide use, um, less navel orange one damage by picking up the almost faster, um, improving soil health by the ability of having cover crop uh, all year round, for instance, reduction of tree water stress um, by the ability to irrigate right after shaking, fewer field passes by uh, eliminating the sweeping, reduction of food safety risk associated with orchard floor contact since the kernels eventually wouldn't touch the floor, the floor and that's reduction of exposure and uh, contamination from pesticides and herbicides, er, herbicides also. And overall improvements in almond quality by working with a more homogeneous product and controlled dry conditions, um, which one, one way we'll talk a little bit more about that. So that said, while we also envision and discuss the potential benefits that off-ground could bring to the table to our industry, we also predicted potential barriers of adoptions, and thus identify the need for different research areas. The four main barriers of adoption that emerge as part of our work with the Harvest Work Group are the ones that you can see here in your screen, which state, stay as research questions are as follow. Is, is off-ground harvest economically viable for our industry? Is the premature drop of fruit prior to shaking the trees, known as windfall, a significant yield loss under an off-ground harvest configuration? Is it possible to efficiently stock and dry off-ground almonds? And if it is possible, is the almond quality improved or reduced? Finally, do we need to adopt different ultra configuration for off-ground harvest? Or could new equipment adapt to our current ultra configuration? So those are the barriers of adoption. And we, together with this analysis of potential benefits, we then develop our current research portfolio that so far consists on several research projects in an organized fashion. So starting by this techno-economic analysis in two years ago, continuing with windfall and drying experiments and so on. And we think that this arrangement uh, of several research projects that, emer that conform a portfolio help us to navigate this big journey in the right direction. Or as we like to say in the work group meetings, eat one slice of pizza at a time. And now, in a nutshell, 
or better say in an almond shell, I would like now like, like to share the latest milestone of our project and then pass it to Wang Wei, who will cover in greater detail what we're doing in drying and what milestone we have achieved in that research priority. So from Dr. Simon's economic study, we observed that there is actually, that this sun, uh, the off ground is a viable option and that there is an, in fact potential for increased profitability for growers up to $200 per acre, along with varying degrees of dust control, depending on the different type of catch and shake scenario. This uh, potential gain, it's mainly justified by the reduction in operational cost, uh, like fewer orchard and cultural practice, specifically talking, eliminating the blower and the sweeper, eliminating ant control, run two instead of six mowing operation during the season, eliminate dormant spray, a strip spray, and, in, and eliminate harvest spray for weed management. So those are savings, operational savings that off-ground harvest could bring. With Dr. Brown, also from UC Davis, um, we have initiated a study that works in uh, that that quantify wind, windfall in current al almond orchards across the valley. It's a multi-year experiment. It's going on. The results of last season showed that windfall was between zero to one percent, with most orchards at less than 0.4 percent windfall. And these are good news because actually Dr. Simmons assumed that windfall was going to be one percent, and Dr. Brown later on quantified that it was less. 2020 results are still under analysis, and but we have to admit that windfall is expected to be greater in certain locations due to significant change in weather conditions during this 2020. We will see, and we that's why we have multiple orchards and multiple years of research to confirm the results. Dr. Pan research, um, uh, who is working in drying with us with several projects and several field and lab experiments show that the cost to mechanically dry a pound of almonds can also range from 0.06 cents to up to 5 cents, depending on the drying method. So there is a big range in uh, costs there, depending on how you dry. And, and definitely one, one way is going to expand on that. Another po uh, milestone achieved from Dr. Pan is that he ha has developed a protocol for velocity and airflow for mechanical drying than when it's actually used correctly results in better, more consistent moisture content of the end product compared to conventional passive drying. So an improvement in overall almond quality in that sense. Finally, just to share with you that we have a, a project that just started this season uh, where uh, they are working in uh, under the hypothesis that, that there is a high probability to reduce novel orange wound damage under off-ground configurations harvest because the fruit is no longer drying in the orchard, eliminating navel orange one's opportunity to feed on the kernels. Um, very preliminary yet, very optimistic results so far. Let's keep our finger crossed and continue uh, with those uh, look having a look to those projects in the future. I would like to finish this uh, my part mentioning that if you would like further information about the specific results for each of these projects, Please visit our research database available at almonds.com. That's it. One way, you go next. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to the session, The Journey Towards Dust Reduction and Off Ground Harvest. You have listened to the presentation given by my colleague Sebastian on some merits of the off ground harvest. I will provide you a brief overview on the major findings from several joint projects ABC funded recently. The more detailed findings from each of those projects will be provided to you in the webinars next spring. To achieve the dust reduction uh, harvest goal, by 50%, we need some adoption of off-ground harvest. This will require more drying mechanism. 
This can be achieved through windrow drying to skip sweeping or drying on solid or level open ground adjacent to or away from orchards. We also may need some mecha mechanical drying away from orchard with hot air or with ambient air. So ABC start to explore drying methodology, drying procedures over three years ago. We explored hot air pothole bend drying and stockpile aeration drying and the open ground, concrete ground sun drying, windrow drying in the orchard in comparison with the conventional orchard floor drying. In that project, we found out we can uh, uh, reach safe moisture levels less than 6% less than one day with hot air pothole bend drying. In, in fact, there's only five hours hot air uh, blowing with uh, you know, 105 degree. And there's three days from sun dry on the concrete ground. And the stockpile drying but taken less than four days when raw drying in the orchard didn't change the drying time as about same as the uh, uh, conventional orchard floor drying, more than six days. This project, we used the uh, in-hole almond slightly at the drier side. It's a more uh, initial kernel moisture is about 9%, you know, small, uh, lower than typical harvest uh, moisture at around 12%. So therefore, for typical harvest fresh almond, will take a slightly longer time. So drying is a typical, calm, necessary uh, practice by many other food industries, such as rice, grains, soybeans, peanuts, walnuts, and pistachio. So many commercial dryers available, like a conveyor dryer, column dryer, silo dryers, and then stadium dryer are drying trainers. There are several, several available in California. So some owned by nut industry, including armor industry, including stadium dryer, column dryer, and then uh, prone drying panels and uh, drying trainers. We can uh, carry out this uh, several commercial scale uh, drying dryer with this, this uh, uh, existing uh, dryers. Test the you know, drying time from typical harvest uh, moisture level from 10 to 12%, you know, dry to the safe moisture level less than six or 5%. So we found the drying time range from nine hours to 18 hours. That vary with a different drying temperature, a temperature anywhere from uh, 95 degree to 138 degree. So long, uh, uh, higher the temperature, shorter drying time, also tied with the air velocity and then um, loading capacity. So we have uh, carried out more uh, commercial scale drying trial with uh, the tra uh, uh, drying trainers. Look at the different drying temperature, different in initial moisture. So we found out Initial moisture or final moisture of the product have a great impact on the uh, drying time or uh, drying performance. Drying time can be decreased with a hotter temperature. Uh, energy consumption increase when they use a higher temperature. And then a specific energy consumption range from 1.2 to 6.9 megajoule per kilogram of water removed. The drying cost estimate about two cents per pound uh, of dry kernel pound from the moisture level from typical harvesting uh, time. It's like uh, around 12%. So higher the moisture, definitely going to take a longer time, uh, uh, going to consume more energy, going to cost more. So we also uh, uh, found a project with a research team from UC Davis and then uh, food, a uh, plan food research institute of Australia to develop the stockpile aeration drying procedure intended for orchard site drying. The several trials been carried out in uh, during both California 
and then Australia harvest season. The team have monitoring, uh, try different uh, monitoring the moisture change of a different part of a stockpile. I tested different uh, pile, uh, stockpile size dimension with a different air velocity, and in corresponding to the weather condition, humidity, and temperature. And this is example, uh, just uh, uh, three trial finished in this harvest season by California team, UC Davis team during California harvest time. Take it 11 to 15 days to dry those uh, uh, harvest almond to, uh, to the safe moisture level less than 5%. They noticed some non-uniformity in the drying uh, uh, moisture level. The higher moisture level from uh, bottom section and a, a lower moisture from top section. So there is a definitely, it's probably due to the uh, limitation of the, the power of the fan they use. They couldn't use the fund of uh, higher, uh, use higher air velocity to accommodate the, 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 uh, the size of the pile. So there is, a, they also notice great impact from environmental condition ambient airflow, temperature, humidity show great impact on the drying time and temperature. And the estimated dry, uh, drying cost is about 0.5 cents per pound of a dry in almond, equivalent to the uh, 2 cents uh, per kernel pound. So those drying time can be uh, shortened if uh, the in almond in the in a contain condition, either in the in the trainer or in the bins. There's two examples showing one is from those uh, 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 prone drying tunnels that almond sit in the bins. So take about two days dry from moisture 12.9% to 7.9%. In the drying trainers, you take three days dry from 12% down to 3.8%. So put that fresh harvest almond in the contained con uh, environment without exposed to fluctuating environmental humidity and temperature, the drying time definitely can be shortened. The shortened time less than three days instead of 11 or 15 days. So stockpile aeration uh, definitely offer an option for growers dry on site without use energy without use heating. But since what we learned from our uh, recent research, the temperature, the hot air, seems does, uh, doesn't uh, appear to have a great impact on quality. So those could be used the uh, hot air to accommodate with the stockpile drying. But anyway, the, there's further optimization needed, especially at the large scale. The team need to figure out right power of a fan right fan speed or air velocity flow, uh, air flow velocity, or how the air being channeled in through the, the, the stockpile to accommodate different size or different dimension of stockpile. Those parameters need to establish. They also had to uh, plan to test if a cover was tarp or without tarp so that they, they, they have a certain way to regulate the air flow through the stockpile so have a better uniform air uh, 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 distribution through the stockpile. So there's lots of work to be done. There's a, a need further uh, uh, study. So now I want to move on to some uh, benefit uh, we learn from the, the project, you know, from the off-ground harvest followed by prompt artificial drying. You know, in addition to the uh, commercial scale drying trials, we also find a project look at the, uh, the drying, different drying condition at the lab scale um, level. Um, evaluate different drying temperature. We evaluate temp drying temperature, constant temp drying temperature up to 140 degree, showing no negative impact on the quality in terms of color, cavity, and concern damage development even shelf life uh, indicator uh, of a, a peroxide value, free fatty acids, everything's comparable to convention, conventional harvest almond. So drying doesn't cause any negative impact. 
even with the heat up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. We also look at the other potential high, uh, step, uh, stepwise high temperature um, drying, how they affect the quality or an um, disinfestation or disinfection. So how stepwise drying being carried out is basically initially you heat up the uh, fresh in-hole almonds to high temperature point, like a 194 degree or 176 degree, hold for one or two or three hours without further heating. And then complete the drying at 140 degree Fahrenheit. So what do we learn from this? Actually, stepwise high temperature offers some additional benefit in, in, in terms of disinfestation or disinfection without the cost impact, negative impact on quality. And that indicating your know, wet almond, in-hole almond or almond hole are very tolerable to the heat. They can absorb lots of heat, higher heat, so only getting the holes without getting the kernel because they didn't cause changes in the uh, kernel quality. In terms of co uh, energy consumption wise, Definitely longer holding will uh, decrease the uh, energy consumption, but it doesn't change the uh, um, uh, drying time, then you decrease uh, drying time because the holding time is a time, right? So then further, there is a more benefit we can, um, you know, can uh, um, from the dry, uh, artificial drying. From uh, right-hand side bottom uh, um, table, indicating this, uh, High temperature stepwise drying, you know, you know, those benefit of a disinfest, uh, disinfestation. So that there are from the high temperature holding, there is a definitely compared to com you know, a conventional drying, ambient air drying, there's no uh, eliminate insect infestation. So definitely showing positive uh, disinfestation. From previous slide, and you also see there's a chart showing there's a disinfection uh, disinf uh, benefit, showing there's a, a up to 0.8 log reduction from background bacteria or artificial elected uh, bacteria. So there is some benefit in terms of bacterial or future potential pathogen reduction. Some from the left hand side, you can also see there is a, the, the benefit of insect damage. Uh, reduction from off-ground harvest followed by prompt artificial drying. The, the table, um, upper table showing two seasons of a trial from the uh, com compare conventional harvest, off-ground harvest. So there's the insect damage level, you know, you know, how many days sit on the ground. So you can say highest, you know, biggest difference is, uh, you know, from 2019, you know, from independency. Yeah, conventional harvest, there is up to 10% insect damage, but off-ground harvest only 3.3% insect damage. The difference is a 6.7 percentage points difference. So this is a really tied with how uh, almond orchard be managing, managed in terms of pest control. So poor managed orchard, you have, um, they might expect a higher never orange worm in infestation you're going to have a higher insect damage set on the ground. You have greater increase in the, the in the, on the orchard uh, floor during drying. So this is definitely is a huge reduction. It's going to provide less, less insect damage, the higher profit for growers. And then dry uh, artificial drying also offer cleaner product. You know you can see the bottom picture showing of ground harvest have a better looking inshore a more consistent uh, uh, appearance product uh, from inshore product. So in conclusion, you know, almond from off-ground harvest followed by artificial drying compared to conventional harvest offer less insect damage product, a cleaner product. There are many commercial dryer available even in California. Those can be used for in-hole almond drying, can be further explored building and drying capacity for in-hole almond drying. Uh, drying can be achieved, uh, reach the safe level of moisture, can be achieved in six to 48 hours, 
vary with the initial moisture level or drying condition. Since, since we already know up to 140 degree Fahrenheit showing no negative impact at the uh, on quality. So use a higher temperature, we can achieve uh, uh, drying um, in few hours. And the drying cost is about, uh, about two cents per, kern per dry kernel pound. Stepwise high temperature offer a dry, hot, temper a hot air drying offer additional benefit in terms of disinfection or disinfestation with a, and the needed further optimization and further you know, current uh, learning in results indicating a heating uh, fresh almond up to 194 degree hold for one hour without further heating then finish drying at the 140 degree at the you know one meter per second uh, air velocity offer definitely a good con uh, good condition to achieve uh, good quality and good uh, short drying time and then disinfestation disinfection benefit and to put to move more uh, forward we need to further look at that to the fun you know you try you know proper harvest almond you know we need to figure out the harvest timing we don't want to dry very wet almond because the you know wetter almond going to consume more energy and we also need to figure out the handling logistic trying so in-hole almond especially wetter in-hole almond consume energy take a time you know that we found out the more than 60 percent of energy used is drying a hole so the you know during you know normal harvest there is lots of loose holes. Should we just try in share almond, leave those loose hole out so it can save energy? That definitely need uh, need a further exploration. And then high temperature stepwise drying should they further explore with a uh, drying trainer. So they should uh, identify a proper proper drying condition. And aeration, stockpile aeration drying, definitely, you know, we need the, you know, more study to establish the right parameter, figure out the right uh, air velocity, air, um, equi the right equipment for right size of a stockpile, the right dimension. And we also need to continue to look at uh, more uh, possible uh, drying technology or drying uh, procedure develop some more dry, drying options so the growers have more options to choose from. To conclude, I want to thank our research team for their hard work. And then, and, you know, from uh, UC Davis, from the Plant Food Research Institute of Australia, and also thank our collaborators. Without their, um, you know, uh, some, some of our handlers, some of you uh, manufacturer companies. If without their help, we would not have this uh, data. I, I thank you for your, for your attention. And then, um, you know, I want to conclude the session with the, the, the video we just uh, produced recently documenting how our almond growers work together with harvester equipment manufacturers to our goal, uh, to achieve our goal of the dust reduction of ground harvest. Thank you. You have a great day. A couple things the Almond Board does. First is we fund research. Since 1973, we've been delivering new tools and practices to help growers remain profitable. We also ensure that we have a safe and nutritious and tasty product for consumers all over the world. Just about over a year ago, the industry set uh, four goals to hold ourselves publicly accountable to continually improve the sustainability of how we produce almonds. We've committed to cutting the dust during harvest by 50% by 2025. This is another example of our commitment to continuous improvement and our commitment to being a good member of the communities in which we live and work. 
The historical legacy of research uh, with the Almond Board has really been the driving force for change. Uh, we, it, just as farmers do on the ranch, they start with a problem, uh, a bunch of great minds get around and say, how can we solve it, what's the best way? So we will charge the uh, educational minds around us to see what we can do. And uh, the, some of the results are absolutely amazing. Uh, and they've really been focal points and really waypoints to the future uh, of big change. The efforts in the past that have reduced dust for the industry have been a lot of almond board led research. Uh, we're, we're taking a look at what's going on on the ground, but I think the other compliment goes to the manufacturers. Uh, they've been staying ahead of uh, dust reduction as a tool for them to improve our orchards and improve the harvest in general. So I think it's really a two-way street. The Harvest World Group has the main manufacturers uh, around harvest equipment in California conventional and off-ground harvest equipment. They are all there and they are all able to put aside their personal interests and goals uh, for the betterment of our growers. And I just love that. And the momentum that is there, what, uh, the, the opinions that they bring to the table and how they all help us together with our growers to move our industry forward, it's just fantastic. So the 2025 goals uh, were really grower enacted goals. These are things that we came, we sat around, we said, how can we be better? What can we do as an industry? And we came up with the four major goals. The one that I really am focused on is the dust reduction goal of 50% dust reduction by the year 2025. In the area of off-ground harvest, we're looking at three distinct areas, windfall, economics of the off-ground harvest and drying. What makes almond growers so unique is the excitement at which they bring to the way they grow almonds. The fact they're always looking for new ways to be more efficient, to be more sustainable, more profitable. Um, and it's really exciting to be in the orchard with growers watching demos of this off-ground equipment and you can just see the light bulbs going off. They're looking at how they're going to save money by avoiding the sweeping step, be able to turn on the irrigation and reduce the stress in their trees. And they're just, the, the light bulbs are going off, the wheels are turning and they're moving forward. Some of the benefits of off-ground harvest beyond reducing dust, it's keeping dust and mites out of your tree. And I think ultimately it's a, it's a cost saver. Uh, you're, you're spending less controlling the mites and some of the things up into the canopy of the tree. And it's also less wear and tear on the equipment. So I think from the economic standpoint, it really drives down to the heart of, uh, you know, not only great for the environment, but great for the pocketbook. We started working with NRCS and with the San Joaquin Air District to develop new incentives. And thanks to the research that we collected among those lines, uh, NRCS, about five years ago too, started with a new incentive program for our growers. We set this harvest goal as an industry to reduce dust because it's, we have such an important footprint here in the state of California. 80% of the world's almonds are grown here. We now have over a million acres and we're all in this together uh, from the southern to the northern part of the state. And it's very important for our communities uh, all around us that, that we are thriving and that we're doing the best job we can to keep the dust down and keep our neighbors uh, happy. Stay up to date with us at almonds.com. It's a one-stop shop for all the information. You can take a look at the how we grow or come join us for a work group meeting. They're open meetings. We'd love to have you share some ideas with us and really be part of the change. Move forward uh, and just get up and go. You know, come with us. Come with us for the, the journey to off-ground harvest and dust reduction.